So there's always have one strategy and one strategy alone to try and avoid electoral wipeout. I'd say one strategy to win the next election, but let's be serious here. They are cooked. Um, and that isn't to sustainably and significantly reverse the unprecedented fall in modern times of the living standards of the people that they supposedly exist to serve. They don't have a plan for that. It isn't to stop the National Health Service perpetually teetering on the edge of collapse. They don't have a plan for that either. It isn't to solve the productivity crisis. That's a long-standing drag on our tepid growth. They don't have a plan for either. It isn't to lift kids out of poverty, to solve the housing crisis, or to fix our creaking infrastructure. Ditto, ditto, ditto. So all they've got in their armory is just to try and make people feel angry at really vulnerable people. And that they hope if they're angry at them, then they'll just won't be angry at them. The Tories, the powerful, those in charge. Instead, they'll be they'll be furious at people without power. Which brings us to the Tories' latest attack on Labour. Now things are so bad, I'm going to defend the Labour Party up to a point. If you think I'm gonna become a fanboy for Keir Starmer, you're probably gonna be disappointed. Um, now, what Labour have offered in terms of proposals on migrants and refugees does represent something of an improvement, even if it's not good enough. And we're going to talk about that shortly. Let's just hear uh, Rishi Sunak back in 2016. Unless before we can change our relationship with before. Europe, we can't tackle immigration properly. Unless we change our relationship with Europe, we can't tackle immigration properly. <laughs> it's funny. It's a funny guy. Um, let's just hear his attack on Labour today, shall we? Keir Starmer spent all of this year voting against our Stop the Boats bill, the toughest legislation that any government has passed to tackle illegal migration. I think he spent most of last year voting against a previous bill, which has since then led to almost 700 arrests related to organised immigration crime. So I don't think it's credible that he really wants to grip this problem. And his plans today seem to amount to saying that we might one day accept 100,000 EU migrants every year. Uh, that doesn't seem like a credible plan to me to stop the boats. Meanwhile, we are getting on and delivering. For the first time ever this year, the number of small boat arrivals is down by almost a fifth. The number of illegal migrants crossing from Albania is down by 90%. We've got a plan. The plan is delivering and I'm determined to stop the boats. Now, this all comes with a big Tory attack on Labour, with a big poster. Labour's border pledge means 100,000 migrants arriving in Britain each and every year. Um, and Rishi Sunak adds, now we know Keir Starmer could open the door to over 100,000 illegal migrants every year. Our plan to stop the boats will deter crossings and break the cycle of criminal gangs. Rah, 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 rah. Load of gibberish. Tories close safe and legal routes, except for Ukraine and Hong Kong. That's why we have uh, fewer asylum applications than we did at the turn of the century, uh, but far more arriving by boat because the safe and legal routes have been shut down. Hence, people arrive on our shores by small boats. Now, what they're doing is conflating 100,000 migrants, which is what they put the poster, uh, with what Rishi Sunak calls illegal migrants. Now, no one is illegal. Human beings are not illegal legal entities in that sense. So I will stick to undocumented migrants. As it is, our net immigration figure is about 600,000 at the moment. Good. Good. Biggest chunk of those is foreign students who contribute about £28 billion to the economy. Quite like to keep that money, given the state of the country's in, personally. As well as Ukrainian and Hong Kong uh, refugees. Also, the likes of foreign doctors and nurses. And frankly, a load of w workers that we just desperately need. Um, it's not just about the economy, though. Immigration has enriched our society and in culture. And our culture, it's, it's, it's been a good thing for, for all of us. Um, I'll declare an interest. My partner is a Brazilian doctor. Uh, migrants are our loved ones, our friends, and so on. Now, the choice constantly go on about immigration as a bad thing, whilst overseeing what I think is good mass levels of immigration. So they they go on about how terrible migrants are all the time, rile up their base, and their base are like, well, there's loads of migrants coming into the country. Quite extraordinary s sort of state of affairs really the more you the more you think about it now they're never going to stop the boats as they talk about and people arriving on boats in terms of the levels of overall immigration obviously a very tiny fraction um the reason they're not going to stop the boats is because people are desperate and the tories have closed down those safe and legal routes so they'll just keep arriving by by boat so what are labor actually arguing for as an alternative to the tories proposal well i often defer on these matters 
uh, to Zoe Gardner, who's a brilliant campaigner on matters related to refugees and migrants. And she says, Labour's proposing to do the absolute bare minimum, process asylum, seek, uh, asylum claims efficiently instead of trying to send people back, uh, see, sorry, send people seeking safety to Rwanda and cooperate with the EU. That's a massive improvement of the current lot that will start reducing harm, but it's not enough. The first priority of any EU migration deal must be to save lives. I've not yet heard about that. Uh, we can't tolerate one more person drowned in the channel, though, let's be honest, our political elite will tolerate that. Uh, suffocate under the lorry or electrocute on the train tracks. That means a deal to share responsibility, not shirk it. Just having a deal to share information, target smuggling between the UK and the EU is all well and good. But we had a deal when we were in the EU and I can't be the only one who remembers the disaster that was. We can't go back to the past. That's what brought us here. Labour's big problem is that we all know targeting smuggling gangs won't stop migration, so stopping it must not be their stated aim. Our aim must be to receive people safely through regulated routes and invest in communities able to support, not make them disappear. The EU is in a different place to when we last had a deal, and a long way further down the route of brutality, spending billions on failed deals to get rid of people. Whatever deal we seek now, it will be a tough job to turn this tide and take the lead for realism and humanity. Listen, in current circumstances, I'm a fan of the bare minimum as a start. I understand we don't agree. If you've given up on Labour, Labour is what we've got. This is the first opportunity for 14 years to start changing things. We need this. I won't let them off. The difference between having an asylum system so refugees can apply to get protection the UK as Labour proposed and just not having one and locking up and trying to send them away as we currently have under the Tories is a massive, important and meaningful positive change. Insane that this needs saying, but here we are. This is where 14 years of Tory racism, xenophobia and hostility brought us. It's that bad. So I agree on this. Basically, what Labour are arguing for is not good enough. We are back to the question of the gap between Labour and the Conservatives. It isn't big enough, but people do live in that gap. In in this case, some of the most desperate and vulnerable people um, on the face of the earth. So I always listen carefully myself when it comes to the question of, you know, will the only current viable replacement to the government at the next election make life tangibly easier and certainly less horrendous for traumatised, desperate people? Not good enough, as Zoe so eloquently says. But it has to be listened to because the Tories have ratcheted up anti-migrant and anti-refugee sentiment to a truly grotesque and disturbing uh, place with far, far darker, kind of a far darker abyss we can still plunge into if they return to power. You know, it's not just the deportations to Rwanda or attempted deportations, but locking migrants up on overcrowded barges that are then infested with Legionella's disease. It's just the all-round horrors inflicted untraumatized people that doesn't mean letting labor off the hook i don't think anyone can accuse me of that i'm an independent commentator and i would make the point that keir starmer promised in the leadership election to have free movement to defend free movement and then he reneged on that solemn commitment as he did on so many other pledges i don't trust the labor leadership i don't trust keir starmer and the feet of the labor leadership need to be held to the fire and pressure needs to be brought to bear to improve the meager offering which is nonetheless something which will mean less suffering for truly desperate people. This is a desperate attack by the Conservatives. They're desperate, they're flat thrashing around. They failed not just on the terms of people like myself, they failed on their own terms, which is why they are heading for such a gruesome and catastrophic and hopefully shattering defeat from which they will struggle to recover from, though never right off the Conservatives. They are the most successful electoral force in the Western world. But nonetheless, I think it's worth discussing this latest attack and what it actually means. Please like, subscribe, do support us on patreon.com for slash I'll see you in a bit.